In the previous session, we learned how to normalize the text to a lower level. Today, let us understand the two algorithms that are used in the modeling stage of AI project cycle, bag of words and DFIDF. Bag of words is a natural language processing model which helps in extracting features out of the text that can be useful in machine learning algorithms. Now this image gives us a brief overview about bag of words. Let us assume the text on the left in this image is the normalized corpus which we have got after text normalization. Now, as we put this text into the bag of words algorithm, the algorithm returns us with unique words and the number of occurrences of these words in the corpus. So we can say that bag of words gives us two things, a vocabulary of words for the corpus and the frequency of these words. Here's the step-by-step -step approach to implement the bag of words algorithm. The first step in bag of words algorithm is text normalization wherein we collect the data and pre-process it. Now, when we look into the second step of bag of words algorithm, it is to create a dictionary of unique words which occur in the corpus. The third step is to create a document vector. Now, this is only for the first document. And the fourth step is to create the document vectors for all the documents. Now, let us understand these four steps in detail. Let me assume that I have three documents. The first document says Aman and Anil are stressed. The second document says Aman went to a therapist. And the third document says Anil went to download a health chatbot. Now, we saw that the first step was text normalization. right? So, what do we do here? We actually break the paragraph into sentences. Now, we already have sentences and hence we are going to keep it as it is. The second step is tokenization, wherein you are going to take individual words like aman, and anil, are stressed, right? So, you are going to start with breaking the sentence into tokens. Then, we are going to remove the special characters. Here, there are no special characters as you see. There is no full stop. There is no inverted comma colon, semicolon, right? So, here this does not play a role, but this is a part of text normalization. Then we convert the text to lowercase. So, the end result of text normalization step would be here to take individual words and put it together. Say for the first document, Aman and Anil are stressed. Same way for the second document, Aman went to a therapist. The third document, Anil went to download a health chatbot. So what we have done here in this, we have done tokenization and we have converted the text to lowercase. Now this is one example given in the textbook with a note that no tokens have been removed in the stop words removal step because we have very little data, just three sentences and few words, right? So we are going to retain all the words as it is. Now we move on to the second step where we create a dictionary of all the unique words in the corpus. Now here if you take the unique words, Aman is occurring for the first time. So this is a unique word and Anil are stressed because all these words are occurring for the first time. Now if you see the second document, Aman has already appeared over here. So, we will ignore this. Went to a therapist. Now, Anil is already repeated. So, this is not to be taken into account. Went is also getting repeated. Two is also getting repeated. Download. A is also getting repeated. Health chatbot. So, what are we left with? We are left with unique words. Amin and Anil are stressed. Went to a therapist. Download health chatbot. So, we have successfully created a dictionary of unique words in the document. Now, let's move on to the third step 
wherein we create a document vector for the first document only. So the first document says Aman and Anil are stressed and we have a vocabulary of unique words, isn't it? Now draw a table with these unique words as columns. Now take the first document and put a one for each word that occurs in the document. So you have to put one for Aman and Anil are stressed whereas all the other words are not appearing in the first document. So you end up with a document vector which contains these numbers. Now students you may ask a question what if a word appears multiple times. Suppose I have Aman repeating this in the document. Okay, So you may have to add one. So this will become Got it? We increment the previous value by 1 in the case where a particular word may get repeated. So this way we create document vector. Now the same thing has to be repeated for the rest of the documents which is step 4. In step 4 we are taking all the documents and then we are creating this document vector table for all the three documents. We have completed this first document in step 3. Now, for step 4, we are doing it for the second document. So, you find one for Aman, one for when, one for to, a therapist. So, whichever word is occurring in the second document, you are marking a one for these words. Next. We move on to the last document that is documentary. So we insert one more row and mark the values. The last document says Anil went to download a health chatbot. Easy, isn't it? So this way we create document vectors for the remaining documents also. Now I am sure you all are clear with bag of words algorithm right let us try to understand the next algorithm that is tfidf tfidf stands for term frequency inverse document frequency now in this we have four different tables to be constructed the first table is your term frequency table the second table is your document frequency table the third one is your inverse document frequency table and the last one is your TF-IDF table. Let's go through the first one. Term frequency table. Now term frequency table is nothing but the document vector table which you have created using bag of words algorithm. Next we create the document frequency table. Now what is this document frequency table? It is the number of documents in which a particular word occurs. How many documents do we have? We have a total of three documents. Now, in these three documents, you're going to check in how many documents do you have the word Aman. You see it in the first document. You see it in the second document. So, you're taking the number as two. Next, we move on to and. And appears only in the first document. Hence, the document frequency is 1. If you see Anil, it is appearing in the first and third document. So, the document frequency is 2. R appears only in the first document. And hence, the value is 1. And so is for stressed. So, this way, you start marking the number of documents in which a word occurs. Now here you have to be very careful and keep in mind that you are not counting the number of times a word occurs in the documents. Even if Aman occurs twice in a particular document, you will have to take the count as 1 because here we count the number of documents that has the word. Got it? The third table that we are going to create is the inverse document frequency table. Now in inverse document frequency table, 
take a count on the number of documents. How many documents do we have here? We have one, two and three. So there are three documents we have taken. Now to create an inverse document frequency table, it is very simple. You put the number of documents as the numerator in your document frequency table. What you end up is your inverse document frequency table. So you take your document frequency table and add this number that is the number of documents to the numerator. So it will be 3 by 2, 3 by 1, 3 by 2, 3 by 1, 3 by 1 and so on. Isn't it very easy to create inverse document frequency? Now finally we are going to create the table for TF-IDF. That is the term frequency inverse document frequency. Now this is calculated using the formula term frequency multiplied by log of inverse document frequency. So you are going to take two tables, one is your term frequency table, the other one is your inverse document frequency table and you are going to construct the TFIDF table which is this one. Now let me explain only for the word Aman. What you are going to do? You are going to draw a table for three documents with all the words that is there in the vocabulary and use this formula. So for the first document, for the word Aman, it is 1 multiplied by log of 3 by 2. 3 by 2 is the value, you are simply replacing it in the formula. Now go to the second document, that is in the second row. Here you are going to take 1, again multiply it by log of 3 by 2, which is what you see here. The third one, it is 0 multiplied by log of 3 by 2. So this is what you get over here. Now you are going to repeat it for all the words in all the documents. So it is easy for us to create this table also. If we try to substitute the values for these words, now we are converting it into numbers. So what is the value of the word Amin? It would be 0.352. I am adding 0.352. 176 and 0 0.176 together. I see the value of AND is 0.477. AND is a stop word. But see, the value is so high. ANIL, again 0 0.352. R, again a stop word, 0 0.477. STRESS, again 0 0.477. Right? So this way, you try to find the value by adding all the values that you get in this particular columns for each word. If the document frequency increases, then the value of the word decreases. Let me assume I have a total of 10 documents in which the word AND occurs in all the 10 documents. Right? Now, if you see the inverse document frequency, it is the total number of documents which I take in the numerator divided by the document frequency. So I get the value 1. But log of 1 is 0. Okay. So here the document frequency is more and the value of the word decreases. Now on the other hand, let me assume another word pollution. Now this occurs in only 3 documents. For this, if you take the inverse document frequency, it is the total number of documents, that is 10, divided by the number of documents in which it has occurred. My document frequency is less here. But what we see is the value of IDF is more. Isn't it? Now you check what is the value that we get out of TF-IDF. Log of 3.33 ends up with 0.5, whereas log of 1 ended up with 0 in the previous case. Which clearly shows that as the document frequency increases, the value of a word decreases. Got it? Now, let us take a look at this graph. It is a plot of 
occurrence of words versus their value. So we take occurrence in the y axis and its value along the x axis. Okay. Now as you can see if the words have highest occurrence in the document or the corpus they are said to have a negligible value hence we can call them as top words now we find words like and or to a the getting repeatedly seen in any document now they have the maximum occurrence but what value do they have they have almost negligible value next we have another set of words which have adequate occurrence in the corpus and have some good amount of value. So we can call these words as frequent words. In our example, we took the names Aman and Anil. They had considerably good value, right? So the same way, these frequent words generally talk about the document subject. As the curve comes down, we see that the occurrence of certain words drops further, but the value of these words are very high. Now, these words occur the least, maybe in one or two documents, but they have the highest value. Now, if you try to relate this with the example that we have seen, stop words like and, are, have very high frequency point, 477, right? So they are the stop words. Now, what are the frequent words here? Words like Aman, Anil. These are frequent words which have considerable value and they speak about the topic. Now, we see the maximum value again for the words like, you know, stress, therapist, download, health, chatbot. So, these words occur very less in the documents, but they are rare or valuable words. Now, if we try to summarize the concept, we can say that words that occur in all the documents with high term frequencies have very less values and are generally the stop words. We also understand that for a word to have high TF IDF value, the word needs to have a high term frequency but less document frequency, meaning it should not occur in all the documents, right? So this shows that the word is important for one document but it is not a common word for all the documents. And finally, these values help the computer to understand which words are to be considered while processing the natural language. The higher the value of a word, the more important the word is for a given corpus. Having understood so much, what are the practical applications of TF-IDF? We find TF-IDF getting used in document classification, wherein you classify the type and genre of the document. The second application could be topic modeling wherein your AI model could easily predict the topic for a given corpus. The third application could be the information retrieval system, which is used to extract the important information out of a corpus. And finally, the stop word filtering, wherein we remove all the unnecessary words out of a text body. I hope these two algorithms and the applications are clear to you, please do like, share and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you.